I began sharpening sawmill blades in a vise at the workbench with a Dremel tool and quickly discovered it's much easier to sharpen them on the mill under tension. The problem with that is you cannot be consistent from tooth to tooth and it does nothing for setting the teeth. Well, there it is. Took maybe five minutes. I didn't time it. Much sharper than before. Most of them. And it works pretty well. Does it work as well as a, uh, a dedicated automatic bandsaw blade sharpener? I'm sure it does not. But it didn't cost $600 either. Not as sharp as it should be. Sharper than it was. I next went to the bench grinder, shaped my fine wheel with a $10 Amazon diamond wheel shaper. Made a template out of plastic from the blade and use that to rough set the wheel and checked it with an actual blade. The little rest is about 10 degrees to the wheel, the same as the teeth. That worked much better than the Dremel tool, but it was still inconsistent. If I didn't slide the blade in just right, I'd take off too much tooth or not enough. This method also raked up the back of the next tooth. Woodland mill sharpeners do not do that. Cook's sharpeners do. So I guess it really doesn't make any difference. The important thing is to get the face of the tooth and the gullet. I finally bit the bullet and ordered the Woodland Mills sharpener and tooth setter. I built a bench out of the crate the sawmill came in and fur I milled on the mill. The bolts holding this thing together are very big, but I have a whole bucket of approximately 9 16 inch bolts that hold the wheels on a manufactured home while it's being transported. Next, I use the planer to even out the surface and that's when I discovered that what looks like a straight cut on the mill might be a little bit wavy, particularly near hard knots. Then it was time to put these tools together. The tooth setter is relatively simple, purely mechanical. The sharpener is a little more complicated. I started with the setter. Nope, no more parts in that box. A little bag with tools and more parts. Everything you need to install this except the lag screws or bolts to fasten it to the bench. I didn't center the setter on the bench because I would have been drilling the holes right next to the joints between the boards. All of the pictures, including the cover of the manual, show the tooth setter from the back side. The impression is the side that's facing me there is the side that's supposed to be facing me. It has to go the other way so the blade rests on the table, not out in space behind me. This is the way it has to go. The Woodland Mills setter 
works from both sides of the base plate. One side to set the teeth to the right, the other side to set the teeth to the left. There are lots of adjustments to get it just right. Okay, go it. Level with the top of the anvil, here and here. The gullet is well above these rails, so don't go by the rails. Okay, we try it out. Blades have to be clean for this operation. You need to be gauging from the steel, not from accumulated crud on the blade. These blades I used before I put the blade scraper on my sawmill. I'll try to remember to put a link to that video below. This tooth right here, the very tip, is it's like that. It's not just bent, it's hooked over. And that hook was registering way higher than it should have been. So... I don't think that's all of it. So why did I give it a few more strokes? I have absolutely no idea. Okay, that's only setting to 33 because I filed off too much. And, but the set, the 16, should be 20 or so. So that one is not going to ever well, maybe after sharpening and then the next reset, we'll see. But it's not going where it should. It should be, yeah, there's 22 after setting. See, 44, it springs back to 22, 22 and a half. But this other one, see, one, two, three. I filed off just a few too many strokes. So even though I'm pushing it over the same distance, it's not as thick, so it's not pushing the plunger as far. It's not reading the same amount of set. But it's too little rather than too much, so it shouldn't leave streaks in the boards. We'll let it go. Well, those first two blades we set are Cook's blades. They're a little bit wider, maybe a millimeter, than these Woodrun Mills blades. And you can see here, perhaps, that the gullet is below the top of the anvil. Should be up there. So we'll raise it just a little bit on both sides. See how that looks? Looks about right. When the blade is at the right height and level, it's a simple matter to raise the rests to meet the bottom of the blade. So, loosen and set those. You're ready to go. 43, 45, 22. So, oh, we're good to go. Cleaning some of these blades requires the use of a very sharp chisel. This is probably the first or second blade I used when I got the mill and it's been hanging and solidifying ever since. I want to set this up on the bench. I think, maybe I don't, because I do want to keep this inside in shitty weather. I can leave the base of the sharpener out there to keep dry, but it's free from rain. So, what do we got here? Sharpening wheel. A bag of parts. A base. 
a um, made in Sweden, not in China. I'm happy <laughs> being largely Swede myself. Um, 12 volt. I believe this is the blade advanced motor. And this would be Two switches, one for the advance, one for the um, grind wheel, made in Sweden. Hallelujah. About the only thing I own around here is not made in China. Okay, this is legs to set it up. I want to use the bench if that will work. If that's not practical, I won't. I've watched the videos on this, but with my memory, it didn't do any good. Okay, if it is desirable to mount a sharpened armor bench, instead of utilizing stand, be sure the M6 by 14 hex bolt was used in place of the four lobe knob in step in the support arms, page 16. Page 16, not a damn thing about inner support arms, it's about the grinding disc. So we go back here. Okay, this is what they're talking about. I'll go back to where I was. This is where the hell was I? Oh, here. Support arms. 19, not 16. Page 19. Maybe I do want it on a stand. Maybe I do. I'm not sharpening blades every damn day. And this equipment has to be kept out of the weather. And this roof doesn't leak, but uh, humidity is about 100% several months of the year. We'll mount it on a stand. My big complaint with woodland mills is they refer to things like M5 by 12 millimeter carriage bolts. I don't know what M5 means. I'm an American. Well, I'm done for today. Got the uh, tooth setter all done. Got the um, sharpener put together. Don't have the battery on it yet and it's not calibrated. I was going to put it on the bench, but I don't want to leave this outside. So by putting it on the stand, it's easier to move inside. I had more room in my basement to keep it in there all the time. Made in Sweden. Kind of like that. Woodland Mills provides a stone with which to shape the uh, grinding wheel to this profile rather than square. It uh, seems to operate very slowly. So, I went in and got my $10 on Amazon, I think it was diamond and we'll try that as soon as I get my glasses on. Slow and easy, don't want to overdo it. Okay, almost there. This thing cuts fast. For ten dollars, I'd say it's well worth it. Uh, matter of fact, Wooden Mills might consider putting a diamond grinder for ten bucks. Geez, and this thing, I'll be here until I die of old age. Started out square, that might require a couple of molecules taken off that shoulder and just a touch off that.
close enough that I'm going to call it good. It's time to test the sharpener. Okay, first set the blade in there. Okay, the blade is riding against the bearing. Okay, see what it says next. Might get ahead of myself here. If gear motor is straining. Well, what the hell is straining? Okay, it does sound like it's straining, doesn't it? Let's see. Maybe that does sound like a bit of a strain. Back off. Quarter turn. Another quarter. That sounds better. No, oh, but I see daylight. A lot of daylight. Going to go to there. Working but not straining. Okay. Just kissing the face of the tooth and maybe not quite deep enough in the gullet. Let's see here. Now this blade has been sharpened by hand with a Dremel tool probably or maybe on the grind wheel in the basement. So it's probably not a absolutely correct profile. A little deeper here. You can see how much of the gullet it's getting. Turn it a little bit more, go a little deeper. That gets the entire gullet. It does not rake the back of the next tooth. And I think I've pretty much got it. Just Kissing the front of that tooth to leave a nice sharp edge. I think I'm happy with that. So. Tighten my lock knob there. Yeah, that's cleaning, cleaning the gullet better. That missed the tooth completely, didn't it? Yes, it did. In fact, several of these have. I know why. Because I loosened this knob and it's pushing it through farther. Just barely caught that tooth. I need to go back and listen to the uh, YouTube video on setting this up to see what their sounds like when it's pushing the blade. Right now with the knob loose it's pushing it through a little bit too far, almost. But the motor sounds better. So if we back off on this a little. Well, that one was pretty good. That one was a miss. Quarter turn. That was a good one. That got it all.
That got all of that. It's straining a little. I don't know the difference between straining and working. Well, the wooden mill sharpener will not win any prizes for speed, but I knew that going in. I will sharpen all of my woodland mills blades because there will probably be substantial reset, recalibration when I sharpen the cooks. Is that straining? I don't know. Getting around to the automatic stop. As a hobbyist, this uh, sharpener is just fine. If I were in this as a business, I would probably get a cook sharpener. It costs a hell of a lot more money. But if it was a business expense, time is money. I think what I may do is try uh, wiping these with oil rather than WD-40. See if they go through this more easily. So the weld hard to see from this side, it's about here. It's finished. Some of these gullet cleanings are very short. Others are longer. There's the weld there. So no. short, 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 short. I made some adjustments along the way. But I'm going to call that a sharp blade. As always, thanks for watching.